Welcome back, this is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks and in this video today we are going to take a look at how to upload Adobe fonts into ClickFunnels. As you know ClickFunnels has lots of fonts but they're all Google fonts so for some reason you want to use an Adobe font. Uh, this is the video you want to watch. And so you can come in here and you can sort a whole bunch of different ways. You can list them differently, images, grid, Oh, that turns the images on and off, grid, list, however you want to do it. You got your featured over here. You can sort by name. You can, of course, search up here at the top. Let us use this Abril font here. It doesn't really matter which one we use. So we will click on view the family. And then we can scroll down and it's going to show us all different ones here. And we can do a grid or we can do a list. And we can scroll down and it's going to show us this is, so this is apparently the, the entirety of the font family. But let's say, because that's what this come down to. So you got to come through here and you got to pick through and you got to decide, okay, what is it that we want in here? So let's just say again, we want a uh, display bold. Let's go extra bold, display black. All right, let's do a display black here. Now, you're not going to need the italic version of this font because you can set that right inside of ClickFunnels by just putting on the italics inside of ClickFunnels. So you only ever need the base font when you are uploading any of these. But now as soon as I say that, now I think, well, actually test it. Just like everything else we want to do is we want to test it. So all fonts are different, all browsers are different. So I would say test to see what it looks like by just using the italics inside of ClickFunnels. If it doesn't look like the italics you see on the screen here, and if that's what you want it to look like, then you definitely want to upload the italics version that's inside of here. So, but for right now, and we'll be able to test this now as we are going to use just the display black. So we're going to activate that font. And if you're not logged in, it will kick you into the login process. You'll get to log in and then you'll come back right to where you were here. And let me see where we were. I don't have a, a, an account anymore, so we're just going off of what's going to be free, I think. So let's see here. I may only have a choice of those two fonts up here. Doesn't matter. It'll all still work out the same. So we're going to go with this one here. We're going to click on it. You've activated a Brill Fat Face regular, our font face or whatever it is. No, it is Fat Face. All right, so I add to, I clicked on Add to Web Project, and we can just uh, open up my existing one. We'll just use an existing project here called Menu, and then we will say we just want the regular font because, again, we're going to test the italics on this. So now let's save this. And here we have two choices of how we're going to load this up into ClickFunnels. We can grab a hold of this link right here. We're going to copy that link. Like I said, this is one of two ways. Um, you can come back then into ClickFunnels. You're going to come into your settings. You're going to come into your head tracking code. And you're going to, in this case here, I don't need what's in here. We can delete that out. And you could paste it in right there if you would like. And let me kill off the custom CSS. So you can put it right there. That's one way of doing it. And why you would want to do this is this will be specific just to this page. Now, some guys will tell you if you use a link instead of a different method, I'll show you in a second, the page loads faster. If you're loading up one uh, one font, I would say do it the CSS way, which I'll show you here in a minute. If you're loading up a bunch of them, then I'd say use this method here. So if you want it just on this page, you want this font just on this page, you put it on the head tracking code of the page. Now, if you want it, let's bounce out of here. If you want it on the entirety of the funnel, you come into your settings for the funnel itself, and then you come down here to the head tracking code and we can take this out again that was for another thing I was working on and you would just paste it right there and then of course scroll down to the bottom and save so this will then put this font onto every single page 
within your funnel. Now, if you want to do it again just on an individual page, and if you want to do it using the CSS method, which for me, I find to be easier just because then it's always right there on the page, and I should have saved that section before I bounced out of it. So we will turn all this back on, and we'll just drop in a quick row and a quick headline element, and we'll take off the bold on all of it except for action headline which we'll make that bold and then we will come down here and we will make that our red color again and you see up here as always you can put in a font up here but if you put in this font up here it will may depending on how you do it it may get overwritten because we could say here we want a let's just say here we want a Google font of Roboto for this. So we have Roboto for this. Then we can come in with our Adobe font and say, okay, only the bold part here we want to put into our Adobe font. So that could be something fun to do as well. So now let's just leave that with the Roboto, which is the Google font. So now the other way to do this is you come in here and you can click on, there's a little button. So here's your default embed code or here is your your import code for the CSS method and we're going to copy this out and now we're just going to open up our CSS on our page and we're going to paste that right up here at the very top line let's push some of this down and that's why I said I kind of like doing it in the CSS even though it's not the preferred way to do it because let's say I have a couple of definitions up here I know what they are. I can see what they are. I can put a comment here at the end of this and say, you know, this is my um, Adobe whatever face font it was called. I can put this right up here. I always see it. I know what it is. And I can even put in here how to call the font family right there in the comment so it's easy for me to see. So now we come back over here and it gives us what we need to put into the CSS. So we're just gonna click on the little boxes here. We're going to copy that. We're gonna come back and we're just gonna kind of paste it in here for now because we're gonna to say to ourselves, okay, where do we want this to go? Because whenever you're calling a font, it has to be specific to an element on the page. So in this case here, we got our element and we're just going to come up, and in this case, we're just going to use the CSS ID selector. So we're going to grab this. We, of course, can find any other way with our selectors to select this item as well, but this is what we're going to use. We're going to do that. We're going to drop this in. We're going to put in a left curly bracket, and then we're going to put in our right curly bracket and move this over just to clean it up a little bit. So now it says Abril Fat Face Serif is our font. So let's inspect this element and see if it worked. And it should not have at this point. So we're going to come here and at the level of this, uh, that ID that we just put in, we can come down here and it says it is Roboto. Okay, so that didn't work so well. So we got our temp headline here. Let's look down here in our code. Does it say that we put this code in here somewhere? Let's uh, take this. Okay, it's right here, but it's lined through. Well, it's lined through because we already called the Roboto font inside of the settings, and you're going to see it right down here in our style we already have that Roboto font set up here in the style so in order to get this to work we're going to have to say we want it to be importante so it's going to be important now so did it change it here um no and it didn't change it because the important uh, the font up here also has a tag of important that's all okay because what we really need to do is go down to the element inside of it, this L headline, this H1 element inside of here, and in here we get to say, okay, is any fonts set in here? And it says inherit, so that's okay. We can do this, but how do we call this then is we have to come back over to our selector and we put in H1 
and there you see now it changed and in this case here we can take out the important and it's not going to affect it because there is no font being called specifically on this h1 element it's on its parent element where that font is being set and it says here we got a weight of 400 because that is the only weight I had available because I don't have a paid account for Adobe. But now let's see, we change this here to 900. It should not make any difference. Oh, actually it did. Hmm, that's interesting. So you can change that. Let's see if we go to 100. Yep, 100 didn't work. 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900. So basically it looks like you got 400 and then, oops, 600. So 500 and 400 are the same. So basically you got two sizes in here. So you got your normal size and then if you go to 600 or above, it makes it a much more bold size. But if you actually have an Adobe account, you'll be able to download everything that you want in here. And then, um, so let's just set this back to 400. But now let's say we only want it to affect the the part that we had bolded over here. So we just take out our H1 and instead, what we're gonna do is look at the code. We're gonna come down here and we want to affect this B tag down there. So we'll turn that H1 into a B. So take that out, replace it with a B. And now this part of the line went back to the normal font, the Roboto font, and then this part, the bold part of the line goes to the um, goes to the Abril fat face and then let's see what happens if we go here to 600 okay so there it even made it bolder when I put in 600 and now let's go to our font style and let's put in italics so it did make it italic but I don't think it made it italic like we had it looking over here and what we want to do now is we want to turn on the italics version of this as well. And then we're going to go to our add to our web project. And we're going to just drop that into an existing one I had. We're going to click on save. And now let's see here. Let's copy. No, let's go to the at import. Let's copy this out. Go into here. And I'm just going to paste it on a new line because I want to see if it changed. Okay, it did not change it at all. Okay, so just by adding that in there, we don't have to change the code because it's created this, this little file for us so that when we go in there, we can call it. So now let's change this back to normal. And then let's grab this definition here and let's put it in, put it there. And what I want to do, got to get this all fixed up here. Okay, so now it's italics. But now let's do this. Let's turn this one here to H1 so it goes to the whole thing. And then we will go to italics here, italic there. And is that looking the same? Well, let's do this. Let's go back to here. Okay, so I'm gonna grab part of the text and we're going to drop that there. Jumps over the lazy dog. Copy that. Put that in there. And so that's normal. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Does that look the same? Mm, no, it looks more like the regular one here than the italics version of it. So I'm not sure if that italics is working or not. Because especially with the Z, that clearly is not the same Z. And we have the B here. So let's see what happens if we go... Okay, it is turned on to italics. Let's see what happens if I turn this off. 
Hmm. Yeah, it definitely does not seem to be pulling in the same type of a Z that we have here. So that, again, is something you're going to have to play around with when using these custom fonts is to see if you can get it to look like it's supposed to look like because I am I know we got this thing set right. Okay, so I paused for a second and I tried a couple different things and I can't quite get that italics to look right. So again, that's something you're going to have to play around with. At least now you know how to get the font in here, whether you're using the CSS or whether you're using the actual uh, links, the files in there that you're going to put in the head tracking code. And then always make sure you get very specific about which elements or even which part of the element you want this font and this font weight applied to. So if you got any questions, just let me know.